In today's video, I will be defining five biomedical career paths. And so if you've been thinking about these biomedical career paths and been wondering what they do, this should give you some idea of what they do. First career path I want to talk about is regulatory affairs. So regulatory affairs specialists or officers tend to work in the biotech, biopharma, medical device company space. And basically what their role is, is to make sure that the company is adhering to all the regulations that have been set forth by the state, by the county, by the country, everything, right? Because every country, every region within that country, every, if you live in the U S every state, right, has certain rules has certain regulations that a medication that a medical device has to meet in order for it to be approved to be sold on the markets okay and so regulatory affairs people um, are in that role where they make sure they're reviewing all the updated regulations and rules and laws and everything to make sure the company is in compliance. So if, if they don't do their work well, the company can fall out of compliance and they can get into a lot of trouble. So this is what regulatory affairs specialists, officers tend to do. And so other roles they may fill include explaining those regulations and policies, maintaining data and information systems, ensuring compliance with all regulations, advising the company on regulatory and compliance matters, evaluating applicable laws and regulations, providing technical review of data and reports, identifying and interpreting new slash relevant regulatory guidelines okay so this is the role that regulatory affairs professionals play scientific slash medical writing so i've had a, you know i've seen this where people have asked what's the difference between a science writer and a medical writer and in in most cases they kind of like the the roles sort of blur well science is more than medicine right science inclu includes agriculture it may include the tech industry and so on and so forth and so science writers have a much more broader area to write in whereas medical writers like the name suggests tend to write within the medical field okay um but i'm gonna put both of them together because again they may be performing some or all or a cross-section of these roles okay so science and medical writers differ in their roles and sometimes as a science writer you could be working in a marketing role so when you are a science or medical writer in a marketing role you will be creating writing marketing content for either the company you work with or if you work in an agency like i do for multiple clients marketing content what's that that inclu includes blog content that includes social media content that includes um, writing things like white papers which are simply educational tools that um help people who are in a buying mind frame or mindset to make a decision you may be writing educational ebooks you may be writing brochures you will be creating a whole set of marketing assets for scientific life sciences health companies to be able to use in their marketing efforts as a science writer you could also be a continuing medical education writer okay so continuing medical education writers that's such a mouthful <laughs> tend to write um, like the name suggests educational material for professionals in the medical field um, and so you may be creating PowerPoint presentations you may be writing medical textbook manuscripts you may be creating um, continuing education content that allows the profession the professionals in that field field recertify for a particular certification for instance or certify for a particular certification so these writers use their scientific knowledge okay to develop these educational materials for professionals in the medical field then you're also going to have regulatory writing regulatory writing is definitely much harder to get into i have found and the reason being again just like reg regulatory affairs professionals they have to like regulatory affairs professionals have to make sure that companies are complying with state and local um and you know nationwide 
as well as international regulations, right? And so as a regulatory writer, you'll be writing documents that ensure that the company stays in compliance. And so some of the documents you may write include preclinical um, documents, clinical documents, and packets that the company may have to submit to the government, for instance, in order to be approved for a drug or a medical device. And so this is what regulatory writers do. You also have a kind of subsection of this known as technical writing and technical writers tend to again leverage their scientific knowledge to write things like manuals or the you know whenever you buy like a drug there's a there's an insert in there um, or a medical device you know or a piece of equipment science and medical writers obviously do so many things you could be in a marketing role you could be writing continuing education CMEs you could be in a regulatory role you could be in a technical role so science and medical writing really cuts across and you can essentially pick and choose which way you want to go with that next role is an r d scientist so r d stands for research and development and like the name suggests these are scientists who tend to work within industry so the definition that i pulled off of uh the internet a research and development scientists specializes in conducting scientific studies and experiments to develop new products and technologies exactly so their research right these are scientists who work in industry and their work their research right is not simply for publication as it is in academia but their research really is to help the company develop new products or new technologies and so as you know that it suggests an r d scientist may not only be in let's say in biotech or biopharma or whatever, but in other industries as well, you could have R and D scientists whose primary job is to do the research, to report the research and to help the company based on that research, develop new products and technologies. The next one I want to talk about um, is the field application scientist role. So as a field application scientist, you are going to be an interface between bench scientists and usually biotech companies okay so biotech companies will produce technologies will produce equipment that bench scientists use in a lab for instance okay and um, a lot of the time <laughs> for those of you that are, are like in a field like mine where we worked in a lab and sometimes machines break at the most inconvenient times. One of the things that was really helpful is for companies to have field application scientists and they act sort of in a customer support role. So let's say that you have a piece of equipment in your lab and it's, it, it breaks down, right? You call the customer service people and they try to troubleshoot with you over the phone. Now that's a whole other role called a technical application scientist. They help you over the phone, right? as to what you should do. They try to give you solutions. Now, if that doesn't work, what the technical application scientist can do is then refer your case to a field application scientist. A field application scientist will come to you, will come to your location, will take a look at your machine, provide education, provide troubleshooting on what you can do to get that machine running again. Field application scientists will also provide, let's say you buy a brand new piece of equipment um, and you need somebody to come and train everybody that's gonna use that equipment in a lab. When I was working in academia, for instance, a machine like a flow cytometer that's a really high investment machine and usually you would need somebody to come and do a, a very extensive training on the machine and so field application scientists can do that as well field application scientists also play a really good role when it comes to or an important role when it comes to helping scientists make decisions as to whether they want to buy something or not um, and the way they do that is by providing demonstrations of that machine or that piece of equipment or technology. So field application scientists are absolutely important to companies because again, they are that interface and they provide that, that really essential customer support that every company needs to provide in order to continue surviving. Medical science liaisons work in pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical companies, and they have a clinical and business understanding of a drug or medical device. And a medical science liaison or MSLs for short, tend to also act as an interface between these biopharma companies or pharmaceutical companies 
and researchers okay that's the difference that's where the difference is between a field application scientist and an msl so they both sound like they're the same <laughs> right because field application scientists are really interfaces uh, in, interfacing with scientists and the biotech company that's producing a technology but in this case this is specific for the biopharma pharma industry and they will interface with these researchers and what they do is they try to and these researchers are usually called key opinion leaders they build relationships with these key opinion leaders and try to get them to get that the medication that the company is producing so that they can run clinical trials now if you live in the united states and in most parts of the world right in order for a drug or medical device to be approved by the fda the US FDA or any other regulatory body that is in a country, there have to be clinical trials, right? Clinical trials that demonstrate safety and efficacy. And so it's important that these medical science liaisons actually get, and you don't just get those researchers from anywhere, you get them from the people that work in academia and the people that work in large health systems, right? And so medical science liaisons will form those relationships with these key opinion leaders and present to them and and you know they have a clinic like i said they have a clinical understanding of what the drug can do so they'll find those people that let's say that the company produces a drug for cancer or for um you know some um problem to do with the eyes or you know the mouth or something like that we're going to find researchers that work in those verticals, right? So we're going to find oncologists, we're going to find, um, you know, ophthalmologists or people that do ophthalmology research. And those people are going to interact with the, the MSL. And then if they, they come to an agreement, these researchers will then run those drugs or medical devices through the clinical trial process, okay? And so as an MSL, you have to have knowledge of a therapeutic area or at least demonstrate knowledge of a therapeutic area. And so let's say that your degree is in microbiology and immunology like me, then maybe you want to look at immuno-oncology or immunology diseases or uh, autoimmune diseases. This, these may be good, good um, therapeutic areas for you to become an MSL in. If you did research on the eye again, maybe ophthalmology um, and that will be something that you could um, become an MSL in. So there is going to be a need for you to have therapeutic knowledge. Another thing that I realized that MSLs, like I said, I've said it already, MSLs have to do, they have to have really good interpersonal skills, right? And so because you're almost like a salesperson, you're trying to sell that a researcher on the technology on the drug and you have to be a good salesperson um, and get them to say yes to you and your company so you're gonna need those skills so those are five top biomedical careers defined are there other careers you want me to talk about leave that in the comments below and I'll make sure to make a video on that